Mr. Popper's Penguins by Richard and Florence Atwater, Chapter 4, Captain Cook. Call who, Captain Cook? asked Mrs. Popper, who had come in so quietly that none of them had heard her. Why the penguin, said Mr. Popper. I was just saying, he went on as Mrs. Popper sat, sat down suddenly on the floor to recover from her surprise, that we name him after Captain Cook. He was a famous English explorer who lived around the time of the American Revolution. He sailed all over where no one had ever been before. He didn't actually get to the South Pole, of course, but he made a lot of important scientific discoveries about the Antarctic regions. He was a brave man, man and a kind leader, so I think Captain Cook would be a very suitable name for our penguin here. Well, I never, said Mrs. Popper. Gork, said Captain Cook, suddenly getting lively again. With a flap of his flippers, he jumped from the tub to the washstand and stood there for a minute, surveying the floor. When he jumped down, walked over to Mrs. Popper and began to peck her ankle. Stop him, Papa, screamed Mrs. Popper, retreating into the hallway from Captain Cook after her, and Mr. Popper and the children followed. In the living room, she paused. So did Captain Cook, for he was delighted with the room. Now, a penguin may look very strange in a living room, but a living room looks very strange to a penguin. Even Mrs. Popper had to smile as they watched Captain Cook with the light of curiosity in his excited circular eyes and his black tailcoat dragging pompously behind his little pinkish feet. Strut from one upholstered chair to another, pecking at each to see which it was made of. When he turned suddenly and marched out to the kitchen, maybe he's hungry, said Janie. Captain Cook immediately marched up to the refrigerator. Gork! he inquired, turning to slant his head wisely at Mrs. Popper, and looked at her pledgingly with his right eye. He certainly is cute, she said. I guess I'll have to forgive him for biting my ankle. He probably only did it out of curiosity. Anyway, he's a nice, clean-looking bird. Ork, repeated the penguin, nibbling at the metal handle of the refrigerator door with his upstretched beak. Mr. Popper opened the door for him, and Captain Cook stood very high, and leaned his sleek black head back so that he could see inside. Now that Mr. Popper's work was over for the winter, the ice box was not quite so full as usual, but the penguin did not know that. What do you suppose he likes to eat? asked Mrs. Popper. Let's see, said Mr. Popper, as he removed all the food and set it on the kitchen table. Now then, Captain Cook, take a look. The penguin jumped up onto a chair and from there onto the edge of the table flapping his flippers again to recover his balance. Then he walked solemnly around the table and between the dishes of food, inspecting everything with the greatest interest, though he touched nothing. Finally, he stood still, very erect, raised his beak to point at the ceiling, and made a loud, almost purring sound. Oh, oh, he thrilled. That's a penguin's way of saying how pleased it is, said Mr. Popper who had read about it in his Antarctic books. Apparently, however, what Captain Cook wanted to show was that he was pleased with their kindness rather than with their food. For now, to their surprise, he jumped down and walked into the dining room. I know, said Mr. Popper. We ought to have some seafood for him. Canned shrimp or something. Or maybe he isn't hungry yet. I've read that penguins can go for a month without food. Mama! Papa! called Bill. Come see what Captain Cook has done. Captain Cook had done it all right. He had discovered the bowl of goldfish on the dining room windowsill. By the time Mrs. Popper reached over to lift him away, he had already swallowed the last of the goldfish. Bad, bad penguin, reproved Mrs. Popper, glaring down at Captain Cook. Captain Cook squatted guiltily on the carpet and tried to make himself look small. He knows he's done wrong, said Mrs. Pop Mr. Popper. Isn't he smart? Maybe we can train him, said Mrs. Popper. Bad, naughty captain, she said to the penguin in a loud voice. Bad to eat the goldfish, as she spanked him on his round black head. Before she could do that again, 
Captain Cook hastily waddled out to the kitchen. There, the poppers found him trying to hide in the still-opened refrigerator. He was squatting under the ice cube coils, under which he could barely squeeze, sitting down. His round, white, circled eyes looked out at them mysteriously from the dimness of the inside of the box. I think that's about the right temperature for him, at that, said Mr. Popper. We could let him sleep there at night. But where will I put the food, asked Mrs. Popper. Oh, I guess we can get another ice box for the food, said Mr. Popper. Look, said Janie, he's gone to sleep. Mr. Popper turned the cold control switch to its coldest, so that Captain Cook could sleep more comfortably. Then he left the door ajar so that the penguin would have plenty of fresh air to breathe. Tomorrow I will have the ice box service department send a man out to bore some holes in the door for air, he said, and then we can put a handle on the inside of the door so that the Captain Cook can go in and out of his refrigerator as he pleases. Well, dear me, I never thought we would have a penguin for a pet, said Mrs. Popper. Still, he behaves pretty well on the whole, as he is so nice and clean, that perhaps he will be a good example for you and the children. And now I declare, we must get busy. We haven't done anything but watch that bird. Papa, will you just help me set the beans on the table, please? Just a minute, answered Mr. Popper. I just happen to think that Captain Cook will not feel right on the floor of that ice box. Penguins make their nest of pebbles and stones, so I will just take some ice cubes out of the tray and put them under him. That way, he will be more comfortable. If you like my channel, you can like and subscribe below. And remember, Mr. Baker loves you.